The murder's trial is back in session and the, uh, the jury deliberations have resumed this morning. Trial is now in the hands of the jury and we're following the case every step of the way. Let's continue our team coverage this morning. Fox 59's Angela Gannot joins us now live outside the Carroll County Courthouse with what we can expect. Ange. Yes, thank you so much, Daniel. This morning we've been giving you a little different flavor of what is happening out here. I want to bring in our next guest to you today, Anya Kane and Kevin Greenlee from the Murder Sheet podcast, talking a little bit more about how they've been following this case. But also, again, if you just take a look down out in front of the courthouse here, the amount of people who are here, local media, national media, YouTubers, podcasters, people that have been covering the story uh, recently than others have been covering it for the seven years. Um, Anya is a journalist. Kevin is an attorney also. Um, Anya, I want to start with you to talk to you, us about first just kind of what it has been like just to be able to, as a journalist, to cover the, something that um, has been hard to get a seat and to get in. <laughs> oh, yes. This has definitely had some public access issues, to put it mildly. I think there's been long lines. It's been cold out, but I've been very proud to see a lot of the Indianapolis press really kind of braving it out. You know, sometimes they have press passes, sometimes they don't, but they're in line and they're trying to get the story. So that's been nice. It's been chaotic at times, but I think generally people are pretty committed to seeing what's going on. Yeah, tell me from your standpoint as a journalist first, when it came to what you heard in the closing arguments, starting with the prosecution first and then the defense, how do you think that they both wrap their cases up and what do you think is going to be hard or easy for the jury? I, definitely. So McClelland really focused as a prosecutor on the day in question, the timeline, and then basically having Richard Allen with his own words put himself in each situation that would basically link him to being bridge guy, who McClelland is saying is responsible for the murder of the girls. So he's doing some sort of very intricate timeline. He's using pictures. He's showing these girls taking selfies before the murders. It's very heartbreaking and very sad. What Rosie was doing was more of listing out kind of the laundry list of issues that the defense has with the uh, investigation and how this case was put together and talking about here's what the prosecution doesn't want you to see, talking about Richard Allen's um, mental health issues in prison. They're focusing on that. And then in the end, he actually took the rather dramatic step of comparing what Richard Allen has been through with the medieval rack. So it's very kind of bombastic, very over the top. McClellan then responds in rebuttal, basically focusing on the girls, calling them heroes, saying that they're the ones who may have helped solve this case by capturing Richard Allen on video and, and, and possibly um, basically like hiding the phone yeah. in Abby's case. So very heartbreaking and just, you know, you kind of see the two styles kind of coming out. Yeah. Kevin, I want to talk to you now as an attorney to kind of give us that other side of it. It's interesting, you know, listening to the podcast I was last night and hearing you both say kind of in totality, in your opinion, the prosecution laid out a case that was devastating and then you hear from so many other people that say I can't imagine they can find Richard Allen guilty there's no DNA they believe that the ballistics are you know bunk science or junk science as an attorney what do you feel right now what do you think is key here and what they are deciding I, I think it is important to look at this in totality there's not a single piece of dramatic evidence there's not the DNA there's not the cliched smoking gun but when you look at everything it, it it adds up. It's like little pebbles adding up to the weight of a big boulder. There is a number of eyewitnesses who place him at the scene and the person they say they saw was bridge guy. There is his gun. Uh, there is him himself saying he was there that day. And finally there is the fact that he has told his wife and his mother and others time and time again that he is the one that committed this crime. We really appreciate you both being out here today and kind of giving us another insight and just what it's been like covering the case, waiting. Any idea on how long that the wait will be today or going to the weekend? What's your thought? Any idea? It's a guess. Uh, I'd love it if, it if the verdict came down today. I think that would be great for the families. But at the end of the day, it's more important that it be the right verdict yeah. and be thoroughly considered. Get it right. Your thoughts? Do you have a, I, a guess? I, I'm kind of trending towards today at this point, but I guess let's see how I feel in the afternoon. I think this could be a long haul, potentially, if you have jurors who disagree. Yeah. Thank you both. Excellent work. Daniel, Anna? Hey, I just have a quick question. I mean, we've all been covering this case since yeah. February 2017. I know Annie and Kevin have been as well. I mean... I would like, be, like mm -hmm. to know their thoughts and their feelings on seeing this all kind of coming to a head potentially today. Yeah, what do you guys feel like too? You guys have been just like we have from the beginning. What does it feel like to you, Anya, to give you this question with this possibly being the end for now? I mean, I guess it wouldn't be because if he's found, you know, 
guilty, not guilty, I mean, there's going to be an appeal. Um, what are your thoughts? It's really surreal to have it feel like there's a little bit of finality here. As you mentioned, if it's a hung jury, if they don't come to a conviction, it's not over. Um, if he's acquitted, it's potentially not over. There's, there's all sorts of possibilities, but there was a very surreal feeling being in that courtroom as they sort of, everyone rested. When you know that it's in the hands of the jury, when you hear that, you're thinking, wow, after all these years, we might have an answer. Um, Daniel, Anna, thank you guys. Back to you um, again. We'll be out here, of course, all day and throughout the weekend if it goes that long. Yeah, nice work, Angela and team who are up there outside the Carroll County Courthouse. We have much more coverage online to keep you updated on developments each day. You can find that extended coverage just by going to our website, fox59.com slash Delphi.